sometime tonight, go clean your room, informal command. Honey, go clean your room now, formal command. So my German commands are formal. All German commands means precision, and it means eye contact, right? So, she knew what Fuß is. She knew what Platz is, the down command, and she knew her recall here. But I'm not putting, I'm not gonna pay you till I finish the chain. So I'm gonna go from a Fuß, to a Platz, to a recall, and then you're paid. Does that make sense? So you have to finish the chain. So I said, Demi Fuß, and I was going, well, this way on my field, or I'll go this way sideways. And it took up the whole field. So I said, Fuss, I'm not paying you because we're not done with the chain, so what did I use? My bridge, good. So I say, Demi Fuss, good. Platz, I said, to lay down, she did this beautiful sit. Shoo. What did I say? No, 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 no. I'm gentle with her. No, 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 come on, let's try again. Now you see her little brain thinking. Fuss, good. Platz, this time she laid down. Good. I turned. And she came before I called. A problem, but a good problem. She wants to be with dad, 11 month old. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. <laughs> so, we started again. Where's good? Lots? Good. This time she waited. Did it here? Good. Click pay. Chain complete. Her father was my shepherd named Gara, that was my high competition dog. It's like he and his daughter spoke in the crate. This actually happened, this funny. I had Garrow out and I was about to start the word Fuss. Platz, I told him to lay down because I went to get something off a table and he did a beautiful sit. This is my four year old, five year old high competition dog. What did I do to him? Boy, he gave him a little correction on the head. Why did I correct him and not Demi? He's adept at the behavior. He's skilled, does that make sense? So you don't want to always stay on a no reward marker. When your dog understands a command, and that's just gonna be a pure human discretion of wisdom and knowledge, is you will figure out when your dog is blowing you off or is confused. I asked my mom this when my daughter was 14 months old. I said, mom, when will I know if Kennedy, our oldest daughter, if she's confused or being disobedient? She's like 14, 15 yeah. months old. She said, in all of my mom's wisdom, you'll know. I'm like, that doesn't help. And I remember, there's an outlet there. This is our first child. There's an outlet there. And she goes to touch it. And what did I say? No, no, honey, don't touch that. And she looked at me and went like this. I'm like, oh, you turkey. Now you know exactly what I'm asking. But now it's a battle of the wills. So what do I tend to be a little bit harsh on my dogs on? Things that get you euthanized. Not coming when you're called. Um... I can't get onto you for a relationship. I can't put a gun to my wife's head and say, stop looking at that guy. The relationship is different, but I tend to be very, very strict with my dogs on dog aggression, handler, aggr uh, handler aggression towards me, uh, human aggression if it's unwarranted, um, not coming in or call. These are things that are like game changers, right? So in the world of Schutzen, I tell people to put things like, <coughs> picture like you shoot pool, the game of pool. From ball one, to 500. One being the worst problem, two and being the second worst problem. So I said, what's the worst thing that could happen in a trial? Your dog bites the judge. What's the second worst thing? Your dog bites another handler in the crowd. Third, your dog attacks another dog. All the way to ball 328 where your dog barely touches the one meter jump with his back foot. I see people working on ball 328. I'm like, you can't even report in. This is a no brainer to me. So you have to have, so the very first thing that we do is I have to have my dog wanting to be with me. You, you can't have a one-way love and train the dog. There's something called compartmentalization of multitasking. I don't know if you guys have heard these terms. Uh, they did this study and it was the different, I think it was in the early 90s, I believe it was either Newsweek or Time Life, you'll have to look it up. It was the difference between a woman's brain in the human, uh, human world and a man's brain in the human world. It was very interesting so somebody with medicine might know this. They put the nuclear dye in or whatever that is that lights up the brain. Virtually all the women, not all, but virtually all the women in the city, they called it multitasking. The women could think about many things at once. The guy's brain lit up very bright, but one area, and it's only what they were thinking about. The guy wasn't taking in all the information like the lady. It just and So I gave my wife a hard time. I said, see, if I'm watching a football game, 
and you're talking to me. I'm not being rude. I didn't hear you. And she goes, no, it doesn't work. I'm compartmentalization. <laughs> Get a book thrown out. Um, so when you have something uh, called a multitasking compartmentalization, to protect my gender, dogs are a little more like guys like this. My dog's not thinking about killing the cat and it's looking at me. It's not going to happen. If my dog wants to kill the cat, it's looking at the cat. I have to teach complete focus. Once I have focus, I can train my dog. I uh, taught U.S. history for 15 years, eighth grade. If I have a kid flirting with a girl next to him, writing, passing notes, I can talk about the U.S. Constitution all I want. You're not hearing me. So I see people, they have no eye contact, which is facial recognition, which is the thing that separates the dogs and the other animals. I can say plots till the cows come home. It's not happening. So I try to think of something called low drive, medium drive, and high drive exercises. What's a low drive exercise in the game of sugar? Down. What's that? Down. Long down. Mm -hmm. I do not want my long down to be a high drive exercise. <laughs> I just, just lay there. What do I want to be a high drive exercise? Recalls. Dumbbells. Mm -hmm. I want like speed and exuberance. Actually, you know what I want my first to be? A medium drive exercise. I obviously don't want a low. Why don't I want a high drive force? I might get leaking, jumping, whining, barking. So I want my force to be a medium drive. So I try to think of the different drives on each exercise. If I want my dog to sit here and look at me, I want it to be a medium drive exercise. I want it to be hungry, but I want the dog to learn to concentrate. So that's kind of key. Everybody, is everybody doing shots on? Mm -hmm. In this? Mm -hmm. Anybody uh, brand new haven't titled dogs before? Or is everybody titled? Okay, so, all right. Okay, I'm a title dog. Okay, okay, good. No, this is great because this is perfect. This is how we all start. The plots with recall. It's a 10 point exercise and it's broken down into. So, like on a Schutzen 3, I'm going to keep calling it Schutzen IGP 3. No, Schutzen 3. There's two components of a Schutz and three on a plots. Five for the buildup and the execution of plots. Five for the recall front and finish. So it's broken, the 10 is broken up in two. If you tell your dog plots, so you do fuss, plots, and your dog does a perfect plots, but it's looking around like this, you're losing points on your back half. You have to have focus. It's not just down. So you have to have your dog focusing on you. So I do not look at a trained dog that's older. Like, I'll bring Slayer out and I'll show you some exercises that I do with uh, my dog in a while. But um, he's had 23 hours and 45 minutes to do whatever he wants. 15 minutes of complete focus is not cruel and unusual punishment to an older dog. Like, hey, I'm out here. You be with me. But I have to always go back. Why do you want to look around? Why do you not want to be with me? So when we take a look at your dogs, I just, first of all, got to see, does your dog want to be with you? Now, I like an independent dog, just depending on the dog. I like a dog that explores, <laughs> you know, a young dog. I like that. But let's say you have a dog that actually likes to explore more than be with you. It doesn't even, like, know you exist. It doesn't even care about you. Well, I will go to the survival drive to make you care about me. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So, building food drive, which I said there's no really such thing. The first thing that I do with a puppy is I start feeding him twice a day for four minutes of feeding. I set the timer. I put the food down, set the timer. And I do this in different areas because dogs will be contextualized. If you only feed in the crate, maybe they're a good eater in the crate. If you only feed in the kitchen, they're only good. I'm like, how about we go to Home Depot when you put their food out and let me see how many concentrate on their food. If you can't concentrate on your food, how are you gonna concentrate on me? That's, that's a no brainer. People say, <laughs> I love all these theories they're going with. There's this new one, like, uh, dogs are domesticated. They're very far removed uh, from the wolf and the coyote. And I'm like, but dogs will go feral real quickly. Go to some of the ranches by my house. You'll see seven of these dogs. They're feral. I mean, these like dogs are crazy. So you want even a domesticated dog that learns how to hunt, a squirrel, whatever. You know what it does not do? Look around. It will have complete focus on the kill the hunt, whatever. You know what I find interesting? Watch trials, you guys. See how many dogs ever look around on the escape bike? They don't. Mm -mm. Staring. And I'm like, okay, why are you looking around on my foos? <laughs> how come you don't leave this guy? Wow, the reward's real high on the escape bike. <laughs> but on the foos, maybe it's not as high. So if I have a dog that says, 
very independent. Just doesn't really care about me at all. I'll go pretty strict. I'm not saying do this. I'm just, this is what a seminar is for. It's just to think about. I have a field like this. I shut all the gates. And I have a food pouch with a Home Depot pouch on me. And I had this yellow lab, not even a Schutzen dog, uh, in from L.A. And a dog's nose is about a thousand times stronger than a human's, right? It's not that it smells a piece of steak a thousand times better than you it does, but it smells a thousandth of a particle piece of steak. That's why I was laughing when the drug cartel was putting uh, cocaine in the middle of coffee. I'm like, the dog's th smelling 100% coffee and 100% cocaine. It's not like our nose. And they were like, how are we getting caught? I'm like, <laughs> So, when I, have my, when I have my food on me, I know the dog smells the food. This yellow lab. If you want to smell this, I'm part of her. Fine, smell. For me to keep saying, stop smelling. Actually, that creates opposite reflex, by the way. So, stop smelling. It'd be like we're at dinner and I say, don't look now, but the guy on your right, you're like, what about the guy on my right? All you want to do is look at the guy on your right. So, the more I tell my dog, don't smell, maybe I'm pulling away. They might not look at a correction. That might be an opposite reflex type of thing. So I had the food on me. I closed all the gates. And thank goodness it was a fat yellow lab. It was a chunky thing. And I go for a walk. And this field's a little longer than mine. But I went from a walk from here to that fence and back. And I closed all the gates. And this dog was da -da 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 -da, running around. Just running around. I had a seat. It was safe. It's a safe field. So I had a seat. Got my phone out. was texting and everything. Literally a half an hour, the dog came up to me, and I went, and I gave it one piece of kibble. I put it up. Day two, same thing, -da 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 -da, running around. And people say, you're starving the dog. I said, my wife said, what do people think you're starving the dog? I said, starving is the implication. I'm putting you in a kennel, and I'm not giving you a choice. It's here. I want you to eat. I'm not saying, go in the crate. You're not eating. You, you have to work for your, you have to do something. On day four, I didn't need a leash or anything. And it, day two, it was like 15 minutes later, the dog came and I gave it a piece of kibble. Day four, I'd go for a walk and the dog's on the wrong side, I'm just paying him. He's like, I love you, no, I love you too. I love you too. And the dog, I had to say, I have value. Versus, say you love me. Quit wanting to run away from me. I'm like, okay, there's an infraction in the relationship, so I'm gonna go to survival. Because we can't negotiate. Well, let's talk about your feelings. Right <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going straight. I'm going straight survival mechanism. Um, so that's kind of when I see. And guess what I told Charlie? I said to Charlie, I said, with Nero, because he uh, feeds raw. I said, Charlie, you got to think about it. I said, I want to start going to hand feeding with him for that. Where Nero says, you are a food source. And I'm like, I love you, Nero. Right now, he'll work for the ball brilliantly, and he does great food drive. It'll only take Nero like 12 hours before he'll get it. He'll be like, he is really good. He's a really good eater. But he'll get it quickly. Um, and most Roddies get it quickly. My shepherds, I just, a little bit harder. I had worked a little bit harder on my shepherds. Uh, my Mallies, I had to work pretty hard on. Dobermans, they have such a really quick metabolism. They got, uh, Magnus got it real quickly. But... It's something to think about. I'm not saying do this, but I'm very pragmatic in my training. What I mean by that is, remember Dr. Phil, when he first came out, before he went crazy? Well, if you like him, sorry. <laughs> Maybe you like him still. <laughs> but when he first came out, I like some of his phrases. How's that working for you? I love that phrase. Right. I'm like, how's that working? So I'm not going to a marriage counselor that's been divorced five times. Right. I'm just not doing it. So when I see some people with theories, I'm like, go get your dog. Let me see. So my dogs do not sleep on the bed. I mean, they don't. But for me to say you can't have your dog sleep on the bed is crazy. Here's what I mean by that. If, if I made a blanket statement, dogs that sleep on beds can't ever win championships. But Kayla Kanaki would be, my dog Yavir slept on the bed. So guess what I would be as a pragmatist? Let him keep sleeping on the bed. Fine. But if you have a problem in the relationship um, and your dog is maybe spoiled, maybe don't sleep on the bed. Or maybe something's got to change. You as the handler have to choose. I'll give you an example with this. I think Rich has heard this story. This Roddy that you see, Slayer, he was very aggressive. He's much calmer now because I have really good focus right now. But he was pretty aggressive. So it was... 
that training when he was probably 21 months old, I'm guessing, 22 months old. I had him on a down in my living room, and he was on his rug. And I'm sitting there after training, like 2 in the morning, letting other dogs potty and everything. And I look up, and he's got that roddy body. He looks at me, and he starts wagging. I'm like, okay, come here, Slayer. So he gets on the couch. Thank goodness I had a tab on. He gets on the couch, and he's on the lap, and I'm petting him, and I'm finishing him, and then he gets stiff. I'm like, oh, man, this is not good. And then I heard, and I'm like, and I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. It scared me. I mean, I'm vulnerable. That, but I had a tab on. I said, easy, buddy. Picked him up. No, man, I got onto his butt so hard all the way. Home. My wife thought we were having a home invasion robbery. She's like, oh. like, no, how many times? You know, I was so mad at him. But now that part of our relationship is now over. Slayer will never be allowed to do that ever again. Does that make sense? You guys see where I'm going with this? So his and my dynamics change from that day on. You'll see him like when he's out right now because the dog really wants to be with me. And you'll see him try to get on my lap at times. Even today, you'll see it. And guess what? Well, I'm talking no sleep. No. Those days are over. Does that mean? Mm-hmm. You guys understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. If a- you saw a problem... For me to provoke them and put them in that situation. And plus, he and I had weirdness after that for probably like three weeks. Pecking order in the household? Yeah. And, well, a pecking order in the household and a respect. I mean, that was a respect factor where he felt he could dominate. Yeah. I'm like, so I don't know if he ever would do that again. I guess what I'm saying, you guys, is be pragmatic with your training. If I'm telling you something is not working, don't do it. But if something you're doing is not working, you might want to think about mm-hmm. another angle. I get nervous at seminars and trainers say this is the only way to do it. Mm-hmm. No. There's a thousand ways to do it. I'm telling you how we do it. Um, and I can tell you right now ten different ways to do a send out, a four hours. I can tell you ten different ways. I'll tell you why we do. There's a reason why I do each thing that I do. Um, now, before we uh, get dogs out, this is dealing only with food. And that's part of their day. The other part of the day is engagement with toy. So I want my dog to love playing. I want it to be fun. Learning should be fun. If you, if I asked you who your favorite teacher was growing up, I bet we all come up with the same person. I bet we all do. Um, that teacher was fun. There were rules within a classroom. They didn't let the class get out of control. There were parameters. You know what I mean? I bet we come up with the same type of teacher. Because the classroom was a fun place, you learned it wasn't chaotic, but it wasn't so strict. Sit down, shut up, take out your pencil, and you're like, oh, great. So it wasn't maybe that kind. So you want learning to be fun. So I try to make everything exciting. Yes, let the puppy chase the food, and like, hey, that's a good one. Yeah, good. So I'm making learning fun. Now with play... I want to teach on the six parts of prey drive that I spoke about. I'm chasing, gripping the counter. We call it tug of war, but it's the kill. It's the bite and kill. So when a helper locks up, you want to see the dog fighting, not just hanging there, like an active fight. That's called the transitional phase. Um, I don't know if anybody saw, Charlie did a good job of that. So did Slayer at the world. Um, he really messed up in obedience, but in his protection, I was very happy with it. I waited before the out to show he's not going to automatic out because I wanted to show the judge he will fight. You know, even though the helper's like, one, two, three, outs, and then he let go. We start teaching this with puppies. So you have your lunge whip, your tug toy, whatever. I don't like the toy to be an entity unto itself. I throw the ball, my dog runs around with the toy. No, the toy represents what? Relationship. So you, you'll see this. Like if I give Slayer the ball, you're going to see him keep punching me. Let's play. Let's play. It's annoying. I'm going to give you that. <laughs> Constantly is punching the toy in my face mm-hmm. to get me to engage with him and play tug of war. That's what you want. So with a young dog, I have a leash on. And uh, maybe it's a 10-foot leash. And I'm playing with the puppy and say... I want always to have a ball on a string or a tug. And I always have different toys. So one time I will play with a hard rubber ball, another one with a juke tug, another one with a French linen tug. So I don't want my toy, dog to gravitate to just one toy. Uh, you, you work with what I have. 
or they kind of get spoiled like I like to play this ball I won't play at that tug you know whatever so I try to constantly mix, mix them up excuse me week to week so I like something with a string on it for the counter and for safety this makes me nervous we have a lady flow she makes me nervous because she'll give bust to that tennis ball and I told her that story I wasn't there there was a Rottweiler I think it was at a Dean seminar and after tracking, it was uh, getting a little bit hot, and the owner gave it the tennis ball, and they were talking, and it got stuck here. They tried to shove it down, and the dog died right there. So I get very nervous with something without a way of popping it out. You know, something small, like at least I can grab that string. And the string on the ball that I have is like this long. Um, so just be careful if you don't have some way, you don't ever want something that they can swallow as a reward. But besides just the safety reason, you and I are connected then to it. It's not you just running around with your toy. No, keep coming back to me and play. That's the engagement where you want the dog to want to be with you. If, I, I stole this formula from Francis Metcalf. It's time plus energy equal prey drive peak. I believe it was Francis Metcalf that I stole it from, so I gotta give him credit. What do I mean by this? The longer I play with a puppy, this will start to go down. You never want your play to end here. You always want it to end here when it's on its way up. So you can see your dog getting excited for the play, right? You don't, you don't want it to become like a saturated solution where it can't handle anymore, or an exhaustion. So you start playing and pretty soon it's going down. Like if we went to a restaurant, the example I like to give, and we had a little bit of creme, you know, at the end of the meal, some creme brulee, and you're like, I couldn't eat a thousand of those, that was so good. Versus all you can eat Baskin Robbins ice cream, you're like, I don't wanna see ice cream for a month, I'm sick. You don't ever want it to be so much where you don't want more. I see people playing, and then the puppy's like, okay, I'm tired, get the toy away from me. And then they're really trying to get it engaged. You wanna end your play session with a young dog, and pretty soon that prey drive keeps going up, because that was fun, it was fun. I start, in fact, a lot of my obedience sessions I do this. Food usually for most dogs is the lower drive, and toy is the higher drive, if it's genetically and people played right. I do almost all of my front half routine, not always, on a young dog, with food. My foos, my sit, my plots, recall. I do my high drive exercises with the ball, such as the dumbbells, jump wall, and the sit down. So I go from the lower drive food to the higher drive ball, and in a trial, they're, you don't want this to be in your trial. So say this is the high drive. Fus, sit, plots, bring, please jump up, where the dog's coming down in drive. You want the drive to actually start increasing as the trial continues. Like, I got a, I mean, one little small bragging point. I got high uh, obedience at nationals, and uh, the judge's critique meant to me more than the points. He said, this was the only dog whose drive increased as the trial went on. I like that, it just sat well with me. Rather, because the dog was like, yes, now I'm working harder for the toy. Instead of, I, I can't get it, it's out of reach, it's a saturated solution, I, I can't win. You want it to be where the dog says, I'm, I'll work harder. And this will be the last thing that I'll mention before, any questions I'll play? Okay. When, so this is for people with older dogs. I heard about a study, and it was with, I'm not condoning this study, but it was uh, with some of the migrant workers in the area in the 70s, and I believe it was with peaches. And it was something like this. The study goes something like this. I read about it when I was doing a report on this uh, in college. They paid group A at the end of each tree. So they would weigh the peaches, and they'd pay them, you know, when they're going on the next tree. Group B, they paid at the end of a row. You know, they weigh the peaches and pay them. Group C was the end of the 20 acre parcel. And group D was the end of harvest. You know which one yielded the least amount of peaches? The one after each tree. Like, okay, that's 35 cents. You know which was the second least amount? The end of the harvest. The reward was too, I can't picture it. The end of the row was the most and the 20 acre parcel was the second most. So I try to think when I'm paying my dog. 
Sometimes they'll do it at the end of uh, each tree, but they gotta know harvest. They have to know at the trial, you keep working and it will come. So like, let's say I'm out here and I'm getting my critique and I'm traveling on this field and Rich is the ball person for me. So he has the ball and he's listening to the critique and I gotta say, thank you, judge. And Rich will meet me back there. Like say this is back there. Boost, he gives me the ball behind where my dog doesn't see him give it to me and it's, I paid my dog. I paid my dog in the trial. When? After the trial. You still got paid. That's where he didn't know it. He just thought, wow, that was, a, that was the slot machine, right? And big play before I put him in the box. A lot of play, yes, that's my play. So he didn't look at a trial, here we go again. So that's very important in a trial. Say that trial was on a Sunday. Guess what my very next session is on Monday morning? I pay him at the end of each tree. I take him to basic position and I pay him. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. I, I want my dog to not say, well, if it's always at the end of harvest, if I'm always paying, like, after the send out, you start, the dog becomes like, less excited. You want that variable slot machine reward that I was talking about. That <coughs> makes sense in my mind. Any questions on that? All right. Want to get some dogs? <laughs>